Josh Smith here again for Guitar World Magazine. Um, today and over the next few months, I want to talk about three tools that I use to really strengthen my approach to improvisation. Things that help me tell better stories within my soloing that have nothing to do with note choice or melodic information. These are tools that I use to strengthen what I'm actually saying. Uh, and the three of them that we're going to talk about are repetition, we all know what that is, um, call and response, where I'm actually answering everything that I play or trading with myself, and then handcuffs, or painting myself into a box. I really like to limit where and what I can play and force myself to still play an effective solo doing that. These three tools are really, really useful in strengthening you know, the, the thread of what you play that, again, has nothing to do with no choice. It just makes your solo really, really strong lyrically. So let's dive in. This month, we're going to start with repetition. All right, so repetition, what do I mean? Well, of course, it's repeating yourself, developing a motif and continuing to reference it throughout a solo. So, you know, if I play an idea, something like... Referencing that again. But maybe with a little change on the end. And then coming back again when I change it to four. And then again, back to the one. Now again, I can play it low, I can play it high, but having a thread that's constant and that repeats within your solo is so useful in creating hooks that non-musicians, non-guitar players out in the audience can relate to, and they're going to immediately start, you know, bobbing their head, tapping their feet, and relating to this solo. And again, it's in a way that has nothing to do with how flashy you are or the really interesting note choices that you make. It's more that you're creating hooks and lines within your solo, a, a real narrative. So when playing a phrase or a lick, when you keep referencing that lick, it becomes a theme. And again, people will relate to that. So let's say I play a B.B. King style lick like this. If you immediately play it again, already like started your solo down the path of success if that makes sense you're playing something that immediately hooks not just you and your ideas in but the audience in so i will keep referencing that lick while still kind of highlighting the other chords there you heard i went to the four um, but that is so helpful in creating a narrative. And next thing you know, you've created a really successful solo. You're into your second and your third chorus, and you every now and then start referencing it a little more or a little less, uh, you know, and bring it back here and there. You've created something just so effective that almost what you play around it doesn't even matter because it's set the tone and the tempo for your solo. Again, this is still a form of improvisation. Whatever lick I'm playing for first is becoming the theme. So let's say I end up starting off with a, whatever, like an Albert Collins type snapping. Again, that's a complete chorus where all I did was keep referencing that same lick. It's like I wrote an instrumental song as the beginning of my solo and created a theme. But again, that's a real narrative. And where you go from there, it's like it got the ball rolling for you. And I, I really feel that's the best way to construct uh, a great solo is to have something that has momentum. And it kind of takes you where you need to go. 